Good morning, everyone. I'll try again. Good morning, everyone. That's great. May I please have the attention of all the graduates, please? I need to explain the procedure which you're going to follow when you come up on stage. You're, you're supposed to have three things with you. The first one is your hood that will be draped over your left arm, as Dion is demonstrating. And the second thing is your name card, which the institution has given you. Then the third thing is the yellow card like this that you are given to complete. Please make sure you complete this before you come up on stage. You'll be brought up row by row, coming up to stage. Then you will get to the stairs, you come up one by one. Next to this podium, there's a black mat stuck on the floor. Please stand on that floor. You hand in your name card. As your name will be read, we take the first photograph of you from the camera situated in the middle of the hall. Please make sure you stand on that carpet and look in that direction for you to have a nice photograph. From here, you walk across the stage. In the middle of the stage, there's a kneeling box. That's where your qualification will be conferred. You're supposed to kneel there. Then from there, at the end of the stage, there is a box. Be, the registrar will be standing on that box. You hand in your belt. You turn around. You face the audience. As the belt passes the chin or the face, that's where we take the second photograph of you. On the camera situated to my far right, where that guy is waving the hand. Please ensure you look in that direction. Also try not to assist, to, to insist to assist the person who will be behind you, because they are already standing on the raised platform. They'll be able to help you over without any complications. They have done a thousand times, so don't don't help them. Then from there, you walk down the stairs. Ladies with high heels try to walk nicely there. Then you go out with that first glass door all the way to the foyer. That's where we're going to take the last head and shoulder portrait of you. And from there, you walk back into the, into the hall. Then you go straight to your seats. We take each and everyone who walks across the stage. However, should you wish to order this photograph, you are also you are welcome to order them after the ceremony. After the ceremony, we are situated in the foyer. I think most of you have seen us. We have quite a number of the studios. You are welcome to bring your family and other friends for other photographs that you may love to take. And lastly, should you have, if you do not have this yellow card, please raise your hand and someone will give you. Thank you very much. You are asked to stand as the procession marches in.
Good morning. Goeiemorgen. Moeweni. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, the Chancellor of the University, Judge Stephen Majid, to open this congregation formally. Judge. Good morning. <clears throat> By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor, I constitute this gathering as a lawful congregation of the Saul Pike University. Please be seated. Members of the SPU choir, would you please proceed to the front to deliver your item? Thank you.
Thank you to our choir. Another hand of applause, please. Thank you very much. As the choir makes their way back to their seats, I'm going to ask our Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Andrew Kraut, to proceed here to the lectern and to formally welcome you to today's event. Professor Kraut, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Chancellor, Chair of Council, Judge Patswane, members of Council here present, SPU management, academic staff, support and professional staff, members of the SRC, President of Convocation, <coughs> our special guest, including our guest speaker for today, Prof. Ahmed Bawa, MECs, those that are present here, our business partners, parents, guardians, relatives, sponsors, alumni, friends, last but not least, our Gradiandi and diplomats. Welcome to the eighth graduation ceremony of Salt Lake University. If you are logged in online, uh, a similar welcome is extended to you too. Now, as I was walking into this wall, I was again reminded of the meaning of graduation. Graduation is a special event. Uh, that's why we all dress up uh, like this. You dress up in a different way. We dress up in our gowns. Uh, and that is to celebrate with you your achievement because it is indeed a celebration. It's also the culmination of many, many years of struggle for you, study, learning, and graduation is also a time for you to say thank you. So before I say anything more, I'd like for you to just pause and maybe just lift your hand and thank those people who have supported you on this long journey to where you are today. I think they're sitting out in the stands somewhere. So just thank him first. Thank you. Similarly, there are people who, apart from the support you've received at home, you've also received support in your lectures, uh, the wraparound support. So thank those people also. Uh, some of them are sitting here in their red gowns, some are sitting on the stage. Your lecturers, your colleagues, your mentors, also thank them in the same way. Now I see the latter thank you was not an, as enthusiastic, so I don't know what to read from that. <coughs> I think without their support, you would probably, uh, or some of you would probably have faulted along the way. So it's important that you appreciate that you did not walk this journey alone. Now for you, the past few years have been transformational. 
And I used the word transformational at the beginning of this year when I did the welcome ceremony for first years. I used uh, the example of the cocoon transforming into a butterfly. Now, you might have started as cocoons, but you now are butterflies. Uh, you are beautiful, you are free, and you have wings. But be very careful how you use that wings and how you fly. How could many of you could not have imagined 16 or 15 or 17 years ago, depending on what you were studying, that you would be here today? I don't know if you can recall your first day, the uncertainty, also the excitement for being at a university. But I'm sure when you made this decision to come to university, you embarked on a journey that changed your life. So you're now in a new place in your life. You're in a new phase in your life. And you transcended into this new phase and this next platform in your growth trajectory. You've grown, and I know that you will never be the same again. If you think that you're the same person that started university, I can assure you, you are not. You have met many people. Some of you have even met your future spouses here. I knew that was going to elicit a, a reaction. <clears throat> you have now entered one of the four seasons of your life. In fact, you've already been busy with one of those four seasons. And we know that seasons play an important role in our lives. If one just look at the weather, uh, we know that uh, seasons determine what you wear, uh, what you eat, uh, what you do with your free time, when you travel, it even affects your moods. And if one looks at the seasons of life in uh, a human being's uh, life cycle, the first 24 years I would regard as the season of spring, <clears throat> you know, where there's hope, new beginnings, new things that you uh, are embarking on, you're meeting new people, you take, make use of fresh opportunities, there's the expectations. That's where you are now. But you're about to enter a new season in your life which is called summer. Of course, summer follows spring. Where you will have growth, you'll reap the benefits of that growth period during, during the springtime. There's going to be abundance abundance of uh, maybe material things, but also abundance of distraction. There will be continued signs of growth. Before you know it, you'll enter the season of autumn, or fall, as people refer to, where you can celebrate more of your successes, more of your achievements, but you'll also have failures along the way. And before you know it, the snow is going to start falling on your head. Uh, some of the snow will disappear and you will enter the, enter the season of winter. So winter, as you know, have a different dimension to it. So in the season of spring, In this season of spring and summer in which you find yourselves, it is important that you do not forget your past as graduates or your present. The past is important because it reminded you of where you come from. The present is important because it helps you to make decisions and to choose the right path for you because I know you have many, many goals and dreams and desires. But whilst you're busy pondering on what you're going to do with your life, please remember that in this season of growth and in this season of abundance, you must continue to serve by liberally giving to yourself. And when I say you must liberally give to yourself, you must also display leadership because giving is leadership. You are a special group of people. You are a special group of people and you are one of 766 
individuals that's going to graduate today. To, in this morning's ceremony, we're going to graduate a total of 437. That's the class that we have here. <laughs> this group of 437, in fact, the group of 766 who will earn their degrees and diplomas today, I am glad to say that 65% or almost two thirds are female. <laughs> now, I don't want to repeat what I've said in the past is where are the males? But as graduates, you have a special place in society for we know that education offers the greatest opportunity for making an impact on the lives of others. And I said that also in my welcome address early in the year, and I said, education is a humbling experience, and if you don't know it yet, you will certainly find it out in future. Education and graduates like yourselves will be pivotal in breaking the cycle of poverty and inequality. So I urge you to go back to your communities and make a constructive contribution. Be the instruments in providing solutions to society rather than become part of the problem. And we know that we are facing many, many challenges in society today. You have to contribute to your family, your home, your village, society at large, and make South Africa a better place. I know that Solplaiki University prepared you properly for this journey that awaits you once you are uh, walking over the stage here. This is a university that has a specific vision. So I'm asking you as graduates to live, live up to that vision. And just to remind you, I'm going to read that vision, it's all over, but I'm going to read it to you again. We are a university critically engaged in teaching, learning, research and development while enhancing democratic practice and social justice in society. We also have a mission, and I would like to point out that through you, we are achieving that mission because we are producing graduates that are citizens, that are competent and capable of realizing the aspirations of society. So go forth and be citizens that are competent and capable. Go forth and be critically engaged with communities of discourse and communities of people in search of pathways for equitable development. Congratulations once again on your achievement, your family's achievement, and the achievement of the university. Thank you very much. Thank you, VC. <clears throat> I am now going to invite our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Deborah Meyer, to introduce to us the keynote speaker at this ceremony today. Professor Meyer. Good morning. Uh, it's an absolute privilege for me to introduce Professor Bawa, and I'm going to do so by reading a short version of his CV. Ahmed Bawa is a professor at the Johannesburg Business School at the University of Johannesburg, where he works on complex theory and organizations. He is also an affiliated professor at Tokyo College at the University of Tokyo. Until September 2022, he was the Chief Executive Officer of Universities South Africa, and prior to this, until 2016, he was Vice Chancellor and Principal of Durban University of Technology. He also served as Deputy Vice Chancellor and Principal of the Durban Center of the University of Natal. 
at the City University of New York. He was a faculty member in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Hunter College and a member of the doctoral faculty at the Graduate Center. He was appointed there as Associate Provost of Curriculum Development. As the Program Officer for Higher Education in Africa with the Ford Foundation, he led the Foundation's African Higher Education Initiative. In this portfolio, he worked in South Africa, Namibia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, Egypt, and Palestine. He grew up in Greytown in the Midlands of KwaZulu-Natal and did all of his schooling there. He is a theoretical particle physicist, having obtained a BSc in physics through UNISA, BSc honors at the University of Natal, MSc nuclear physics at the University of Durban Westville, and a PhD at Durham University. He serves on several advisory boards, such as the South African Institute of Distance Education, the Center for the AIDS Program of Research of South Africa, and the Higher Education Support Program of the Open uh, Society Foundation. In addition to having a continuing interest in high energy physics, his area of interest include higher education and development, the social ownership of universities, and science and society. So we are indeed privileged to hear from Professor Ahmed Bawa, our special guest speaker today. Chancellor. It gives me great pleasure to be here today, and I'd like to thank Vice Chancellor Professor Crouch for inviting me to be a part of this joyous occasion. It is a privilege to be here, really, and to share this wonderful moment with all of you. Um, graduation ceremonies are opportunities for the celebration of success and excellence based on years of hard work, commitment, and dedication. I must begin by congratulating the class of, 19, of 2022. This is an important personal milestone and a wonderful achievement. I will, it will do you good to remember that of every 100 South Africans between the ages of 18 and 24, you were just one of 21 who got a place at a university. And more importantly, of the 21, you were just one of 13 who graduated. So you are super special, and you should understand that. It's very important for you to understand that. I must make special mention of SPU's first master's graduates. You have opened a pathway, an avenue, that many will follow, uh, follow you on. And Professor Crouch, with this achievement, Sol Plaiki University has set itself on a path too to becoming one of South Africa's fully-fledged, high-performing universities. And to all the parents and families of the graduates who are here and who are not here, I can only say, take a bow. This is as much your achievement as it is that of your children. Your sacrifices and commitment make today's celebration possible. And I must acknowledge, of course, the commitment and dedication of your teachers. Learning at university is a long-standing partnership between student and teacher, founded on respect for each other and a clear understanding of the responsibilities of each. This respect between teacher and student and the interaction that flows from it are the centerpiece of a university education. Without it, success is impossible. This is very much the quintessence of academic freedom. It would not be an exaggeration for me to say that this is what has locked me personally into higher education since the age of 18. We all know that not all the learning that takes place at a university happens in the classroom. Universities are wonderful environments to provide their students with different kinds of learning experiences, opportunities to develop intellectually, socially, 
emotionally, and the whole university, all of its people, come together to achieve this. But today is a day for you to celebrate. But tomorrow will signal a time for you to reflect. We must reflect, because looking back and pondering is important for looking forward. So this little speech is really for tomorrow. I hope you don't mind. So I have some bad news for you. Your hard work begins now. The university education that you have successfully navigated and completed is really a solid platform for your further development, for your creativity, for your imagination of new futures for yourself and for the world. Your degree, of course, is an important platform without which any solutions that you might think of would be very hard to come by. Your hard work begins now as you design your trajectory into the future. In fact, you will design multiple trajectories into the future, into multiple futures. Though at the end, there will have been just one future, one trajectory and one future. Many paths will open up to you and you will have to make choices, some easy and some difficult. The world we live in is in great flux. It is ever-changing. It is also a world I am tormented to say that my generation has made a mess of. And so we must depend on you to imagine new futures. Global warming, which is caused by human greed and unbridled human consumption, has left us precariously trying to work out what kind of future humanity will have on Earth. And even today, notwithstanding this precarity, we are experiencing reluctance on the part of political leaders, business people, and so on, to change policies that would help us to reverse the effects of global warming. We are also experiencing high levels of inequality and poverty, so much so that in many countries of the world, including some of the most established democracies, we are experiencing serious social fracturing. Our own beautiful nation, with its wonderfully rich diversity, is experiencing such fracturing. We hold the record now, the ignominious record, of being the most unequal society in the world. There are also mass migrations of people who are escaping conflicts and wars, food insecurity, political oppression, and so on. We are, also, we are all deeply moved by the news just six days ago of 210 bodies of migrants being found by the Tunisian Coast Guard in North Africa as they try to reach Europe. We are experiencing also an epidemic of corruption as we see the utter destruction of ethical society, nowhere more than here in this beloved country of ours, where it has become fundamentally endemic. And perhaps more insidious, most insidious of all and most dangerous is the erosion of democracy that takes hold in many parts of the world, including the United States of America, where we've seen huge tensions and pressures emerge, in places like India. Um, and of course, you know, if we are not careful, if we don't pay particular attention, we will experience in South Africa too. We are seeing the rise of the weapons of fake news, disinformation, and what I call anti-intellectualism, the retreat from rational thinking. This is not a good time for a young person to enter the world, and yet it is a moment of great opportunity. As you're aware, there are also vast changes that are taking place in the world of work. 40 years ago, you would have taken up a job, and then, if you were lucky, you would have climbed a ladder which would have been periodically as you were promoted, usually within the same company or the same employment. The ladder was always vertical, and you would have two or three jobs in your lifetime. Most of our parents experienced that. Now things are much more complex. You will probably have 10 jobs in your lifetime, 
your ladders will be pointing up and down, to the left and to the right. There will be lots of decision points for you, each tied to your intellectual, social, and emotional needs, each requiring you much reflection, each producing pressures of various kinds, each an exciting new adventure. Because the world is changing so rapidly, you will face the challenge of being committed to continuous learning, continuously improving your skills. And what that does say is that this degree that you have received from the Sol Bleike University today will be the platform for this continuous learning. In fact, what I want to say to you is that you have to assume the responsibility to engage in continuous learning. And of course, we also experience the impact of new technologies on our lives. That is yet another additional kind of influence in the pace at which things are changing as we live our lives. I'll give you a few examples. If one takes a train from John F. Kennedy Airport in, the, in New York to Queens, which is one of the suburbs of New York, one of the boroughs of New York, and if you were in the first car of that train, you will discover quite quickly that the train has no driver. This will be an increasing trend, right? driverless trains. As far as cars are concerned, many countries are now working out how to register autonomous cars, driverless cars. I'm sure you've all seen the meme where a policeman in the USA stops a Tesla car and asks the driver to step out. Of course, nobody gets out because the car has no driver. Only recently has technology advanced to the stage where it is possible now to de determine the DNA structure of people and animals and plants that lived 50,000 years ago by analyzing fossil fragments. What that tells us, of course, is that we are now able to plot the migration of people out of our continent to other parts of the world with precision. Another great biological breakthrough is to do with proteins, which are very complex molecules. It used to take physicists six months to a year to decipher or to determine the folding structure, the folding structure of proteins. Proteins are very complex molecules, and they fold in a particular way, depending on the nature of the chemicals that make up the proteins. Now, with the help of artificial intelligence, this happens in seconds. You might ask, you know, just what does all this mean? Well, one example of how this has sped up things is the game changer that all of this was in the development of the, vac of the vaccine for COVID-19. Vaccines usually took five to 10 years to be made available for human use. During the COVID-19 pandemic, scientists came together from across the world to produce vaccines, get them to the market in less than a year. This is revolutionary. But of course, we also have to remind ourselves that the use of technology is not all positive, that there are a whole range of uses of technology which threaten human, um, human rights. So let me give you one example of this. With the advances that are made in determining the way in which the human genome uh, creates and recreates diseases and so on, it's not very far-fetched to imagine that a few years from now, as when a child is born, DNA, a DNA analysis will be done, and it will be possible, it might be possible to say, you know, this child is going to be susceptible to this disease or that disease or that disease. And that might determine the way in which insurance companies, for example, insure people for health purposes, right? That's a negative kind of connotation. We've also seen how face, facial recognition is being used to target particular people around the world. A tremendous amount of writing has now been done about the way in which these technologies can negatively impact humanity. And so therefore, there's this very important 
challenge that we face to ensure that as we nav navigate this new world, we are also thinking about the negative impacts and to work on the ethical basis on which these technologies can be rolled out. Interestingly, the South African Reserve Bank issued no new notes and coins two days ago. That's very nice. I'd like to have a look at them, I haven't seen them yet. But I wonder why. I do not carry cash anymore. In fact, I don't even carry a credit card anymore. I use my phone to pay, right? Uh, China is very much now a cashless society, and India is heading in that direction. So one has to say that there are these huge changes that are taking place in, uh, in, um, in the world. And changes like these, of course, affect our daily lives. They affect our workplaces. They affect the way in which we relate to each other. They affect the nature of the work that we do. These kinds of changes mean that we must constantly be learning. It is what you might think of as lifelong learning. On a different tack, our world is filled with uncertainties. In physics, we come to understand that uncertainty is built into the nature of the universe. It isn't something that we can avoid. It can't be removed. It has to be understood. We have built a whole branch of physics called quantum physics to understand how to manage this uncertainty. Quantum physics, unfortunately, doesn't help us to deal with the uncertainties in our daily lives. We have to develop personal skills to deal with this uncertainty. We must build preparedness for uncertainty, learn how to cope with unexpected changes. I have just returned from Japan. I have been there for six months as a professor at the University of Tokyo. Japan experiences four or five earthquakes every single day each in different parts of the country. My Japanese friends know that sooner or later, they are sure that sooner or later, one of these earthquakes will have devastating consequences. It could be this minute, or it could be in 12 years. And there's simply no way of predicting such a cat catastrophic event. They super engineer buildings, they super-engineer bridges and freeways and roads. Children are taught how to respond to an earthquake so that their actions are automatic. And one has a sense that you are there, that you, when you are there, one has a sense of just how spiritual Japanese are. Not religious, but spiritual. How orderly they are. And the special relationship that they have with nature. Learning to cope with uncertainty is central to their experience. And it is that kind of preparation at the individual level that we have to encounter if we want to deal with uncertainties. And just on another tack again, our world is a highly complex environment with lots of moving parts. There are eight billion humans, there are 20 quintillion animals. Quintillion is billion, billion. I don't know how many plants there are. The, there's the atmosphere, which is hugely complex. I'm just amazed about the rain in Kimberley. It's just, every five minutes, it seems to pour, and then it stops for an hour. And then, all the machines that we have, the buildings that we put together, and so on, these all interact with each other in ways that are not always understandable, not always straightforward. In physics, we say that they interact with each other non-linearly. We don't quite understand very often how that relationship works out. Going back to physics, we have, we have developed something called complexity theory that helps us to understand complex systems better. But physics is easy, because all we do is we sort of constrain systems. But we don't live in a system where you can constrain things. We live in a, in a society that is very complexly kind of connected, very com complexly interwoven with the environment and so on. One of the outcomes of this complexity theory that we discover in, in physics is what we call the butterfly effect. You might have heard of this. A butterfly effect essentially says 
that a very small change in one part of the environment might produce huge changes in other parts of the, of the environment. So let me give you an example. The flapping of a butterfly's wing, that's why it's called the butterfly effect. The flapping of a butterfly's wing in one part of our atmosphere might produce a hurricane in another part of the atmosphere. That's a bit far-fetched, but I hope you get the idea that a very small effect might produce a very big outcome. Actually, I'm not going to say much more about that. I'll have to leave that to the Dean of Students, Nicole Morris, who's studying this at the moment. So, I think what I'm trying to say to you is that, first of all, we have a vastly changing world. Secondly, we have large uncertainties in our world. And thirdly, we have this very, very complex environment in which we all exist. And somehow, with the platform that SPU has given you, you're going to have to sort of navigate this very complex world in which we survive. For me, as I was growing up, the justices of apartheid were everywhere to be seen. I grew up in a small town as, uh, as, uh, as Deputy Vice Chancellor Deborah Mayer just mentioned. I grew up in a small town in the Midlands of KZN called Greytown. In Isizulu, it's called Ndlovan. When my grandmother sent me to the shop to buy a packet of sugar or a loaf of bread, we had to go to the side of the shop and buy it through the window. I'm sure many of your parents will, will know this experience. Only white people were allowed into the shop. It is not surprising then that for my generation, we were not thinking about global warming. We were thinking about how to abolish apartheid. But every generation has its struggles. The big question is, what are the struggles of your generation? What is it that drives your passion? What is it that galvanizes your thinking and your imagination? Could it be building a society that is more socially cohesive? Could it be building an ethical society? Could it be addressing global warming and climate change? Building a more equal society? Building a global peace movement? You know, what is it that drives your passion? And I think that this is really for each of us to engage with, but also to engage with as a society. So, just to finish off, Chancellor, I've made a list of 11 pieces of advice which I, which I would like to kind of put to you. So I'm going to Ava to present to you my 11 thoughts as you navigate this uncertain, complex future. First of all, as I mentioned right at the beginning, you are really special and you should understand this. But understand too that there are expectations of you you will form a part of new generations of South African intellectuals. You will join a line that goes back many years that will include Sol Plaiki and Govan Mbeki, Nelson Mandela, Yusuf Dadu, Steve Biko, Strini Moodley, Neil Agat, Tabu, uh, Tabu Mbeki, and many, many others. But more importantly, understand too that there'll be expectations of you from your family, from your community, from the nation, in fact, because the future of our nation is in your hands. You have had a good education. Now, it, second point, you have had a good education. Now it is time for you to try to understand what the value of your education is. How can you put the knowledge and skills that you have gained at SPU into use for purposes that you have determined? You must think about the idea that you must think beyond the idea that your qualification has only transactional value. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is you have to move beyond the idea that somehow this qualification of yours is to get a job or is to get something. The important thing for you now is to try and understand how to build, if you like, an understanding of 
the use of the knowledge that you have gained and the use of the skills that you have gained? How do you bring them to bear on solving problems? So what I'm trying to say here is think about the use value of the knowledge and the skills that you have gained. In some ways, this is what you might think of as entrepreneurial thinking. It's really about saying, I've got a whole lot of knowledge and information. What can I do with this? What can I, how can I bring this to bear on improving the quality of life of people? Or improving the quality of life of my family? Or improving the functioning of a factory? Or whatever the case might be. The third point I'd like to make is always center yourself on a set of values that you decide upon. We have become decentered in South Africa from a values approach. Everything and anything goes. We do whatever we like at a whim. You must focus on building for yourself a set of values that itself is centered on human well-being and planet well-being. Values that shape your thoughts and actions. Make a habit every evening to stand before a mirror and to ask how your actions are aligned with your values. It is critically important to develop a set of values. Think of yourself as a the fourth, the fourth point. Think of yourself as a global citizen. The world has never been more interconnected as it is now. The grand challenges that are facing humanity are all intensely local and intensely global at the same time. Make friends and colleagues in every part of the world. Engage new languages. Be a global citizen. Your education at SPU gives you that platform. The fifth point I want to make, keep learning. Do not stop learning. Learn all the time. In any case, learning is good to prevent you from sliding into dementia. Assume this responsibility. Nobody will be checking on you. It's up to you. My sixth point, read as many novels as you can. You will have adventures you could never otherwise have imagined. Read all Zaykesum Dar's novels, and especially the Madonna of Excelsior, which is based just 150 kilometers from here. Paswana Mpez, Welcome to Our Hillbrow, takes you on a journey of an amazing neighborhood of our nation. Read Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children about the independence of India. And read all that Ngugi Wationgo and Wally Shoinka have written. Kenzo Buru Ue, the Japanese novel, Nobel Prize winner, takes you through a mirror that is Japan's seemingly placid, socially cohesive society to a world of torment and anguish, including the effects of the atom bombs that were dropped by the USA on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Novels will take you on journeys and adventures you simply can't imagine. They are food for your intellect, for your emotions, and for your social development. By the way, you can also listen to novels now on audiobooks or one of those platforms. Okay. Number seven, this is a no-brainer for you. Listen to music. Music lights up parts of the brain that reading doesn't. It is referred to as a whole brain experience. For me, there is something special about rock. I listen to rock a lot. But also the music of the late Ali Farkature, who merges traditional Malian music with the music of the, blue, of the blues of the USA. And the spiritual kawali of Nasrat Fatih Ali Khan of Pakistan. They somehow evoke deep resonances in me. I don't know how it happens. And I think we all need this through whatever music does it for you. Number eight, be organic. Be connected to your context, to your community, to the world. Too often, our intellectuals 
even some of those that I've listed above, are distant from their contexts. Remain connected to the communities you come from and be connected to new communities. It is very important to be organically grounded. Number nine, laugh a lot when things, even when things are tough. It is good for your health and it lifts one's spirit. You know, as I was growing up, you know, amongst other activists, the one thing that we always did was we laughed. Even in times of great stress and pressure, we laughed. And it's important to laugh. Number 10, eat well. Enjoy food. Rukeya, who is my soulmate for the last 50 years, says she doesn't trust people who diet. Don't eat. <laughs> don't eat. I mean, don't get fixated on diets. Diets don't work. Weight losing diets, I mean. Enjoy food. And number 11, my last one, and for me the most important one, walk for the sake of walking. There is no problem in the world that walking won't help to solve. Just walk. Walk without purpose. That's it. Take it or leave it. <laughs> we depend on you for building a better future for us, for yourselves, your families, for your communities, and for our deeply broken society, and for the earth. I deeply apologize for my generation, who has led us to a state of utter disrepair, socioeconomically, psychologically, and politically. But now, we must leave it to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you, Professor Bauer. Let's give the prof another hand, please. If the choir can make their way up to the front again for the second item. Thank you.
while the choir makes their way back to uh, their seats, I'm going to invite uh, the Vice-Chancellor to come up and again to re officially request the Chancellor to award the certificates and diplomas and confer the degrees. Easy, thank you. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to request that you award the highest certificates, diplomas, and confer the degrees of the university to those candidates in the schools of economic and management sciences, natural and applied sciences, and humanities, whose names appear in the program. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I award the highest certificates, diplomas, and confer the degrees of the Soplaiki University to those candidates whose name appear in the program. Thank you, Vice Chancellor and Chancellor. Uh, we'll proceed then with uh, Economics and Management Sciences. Uh, the head of school, Professor Joubert, will uh, come to the lectern. After that, he'll be followed by the Head of School of Natural and Applied Sciences, Professor Galebe, and lastly, by the Acting Head of School, uh, Dr. Rademeyer for the School of Humanities. Thank you. Good morning. Mr. Chancellor, before I read out the names, I wish to congratulate all the graduates and their families this morning. But of course, a special word of congratulations to these graduates from the School of Economic and Management Sciences. We, we are proud of you, and you must know that. Mr. Chancellor, we produce a bumper crop of graduates today. A total of 156 graduates will receive various qualifications, and we're also making history in that the very first postgraduate diploma in entrepreneurship will be awarded today. <laughs> then we are very pleased, and I'm sure Vice Chancellor, you will share that with us, that a record number of 58 postgraduate diplomas in public management will be awarded today. And we are looking forward to enroll some of them next year in our planned master's qualification. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the diploma in retail business management. Elrich Alexandru Apolis. Patricia Bali. Bernadine Alicia Bella Benjamin. Roxanne Jasmine Bonani. Musenkozi Given Dambuza. <laughs> Itumeling Junior Filane. <laughs> Koketsu Kolesile Ken. Felisa Pilele Landu. Okay. 
Chahuda Sylvia Bernalee Losper. Mzitwa Zwi Mabasu. Camilla Lebone Marimang. Abigail Mosveshwe. Dimpo Realabetswe Matsaba. Genève Tabisa Matthews. Amor Nurisha Kailin Mkiza. Chanel Mosito. Elizabeth Ponchu Motswiri. Kaniswa Mpampi. Lydia Lesehu Mokwena. Sandile Ntandu Ntiane. Ruth Signolo Matungwa. Mpo Nozipo Vernet Olifile. Chesman Jeffrey Parker. Chaping Oscar Sielamo. Kutatsu Josephine Serumula. Letlocho Nolo Edwin Tinta. <laughs> Motlale Pule Constance Tulo. Tabesile Zanele Twala. Stefino Di Mera Titus. Nza Solomon Tlomedi. Tomila Tsaka. Theolin Gabriela Alexis van Wyk.
Shanae Sherniqua Visser. Kreis Tose Java. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that George Edward Daniels passes with distinction and receives an award for the best performing student in work integrated learning in recognition of his achievement. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor of informing you that Annalise Joaquinu Babu passes with distinction and receives an award for the best performing student in the Diploma in Retail Business Management. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Commerce. Apologies, I skipped a page. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Advanced Diploma in Management. Zenobia Mekala April. <laughs> Olivia Marco Chuenemang. <laughs> Jean Claude de Bojo Esterizen. Riabone Mabe. Francis Sechaba Mabea. Patience Ka Elebalwe Mabika. Sepo Hilton Marignane. Kobon <laughs> Wang Betty Deneo Maduo. <laughs> Deneo Vuelva Manzana. Kiu Chapile Lamiz Marequa. Fortune Onalena Marumo. Bonolo Sanchez Maseng. Itumaleng Machediso. Siabonga Perfect Mbata. Thank you. Nomfundu Zamakolo Promise Ngluli.
Otsepeng Karen Mojanaga. Palesa Moleme. Sechaba Modiselele Mosata. Kabu Morolong. Monique Shannon Nakedi. Princess Kanyasile Ndubula. Pulani Violet Ngakane. Njemla Siasanga. Nonschlanschla Pis Nkoku. Ravonia Kelebochile Pakisa. Elishli Bali. Santi, so, sorry, Santu, LC, Pokane. Cordelia Mucho Picuchai. Ole Bochen Ismail Schwabane. Diedrei Jodin Titis. Cassius Itumeleng Rit. Mpo Precious Setlabi. Zamakile Tembile Alex Smith. Kusaletsu Yvonne Chabangu. Kakishu Godfrey Chomakai. Sha Andrei Sandiswa Sidumo. Dunjiswa Zono. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Beauty Oratile Mokwanetsi passes with distinction and receives the award for excellence for managerial finance in advanced diploma in management. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Vanolia Boipelo Iva Setluanu passes with distinction 
and receives the award for best performing student in the advanced diploma in management. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with requirements for the Bachelor of Commerce. Vanessa Helberg. <laughs> Tumelu Lebohang Molevi. Orabile Freddy Mosuiu. <laughs> Tebo Sean Nkotle. <laughs> Sampiwe Nayume. Bonolo Pugnane. <laughs> Lou Nathan Geraldo Roshan Titus. <laughs> Jihanu Carlos Van Wyk. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor of informing you that Patrick Radibi Singh Setlodi receives the award for excellence for financial management in the Bachelor of Commerce in the recognition of his achievement. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Ole Bocheng Khaswane receives an award for the best performing student in the Bachelor of Commerce. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the postgraduate diploma in public management. Ntswake Tumisang, Africa. Jillian Charlene Bartman. Khoitse Mang Lepina Bosvar. Stanley Eugene Khalane. Giselle Bianca Grief. <laughs> Palesa Pearl Haas. <laughs> Halaletsang Euphorica Isiang. Feliswa Alicia Jack. Vuelva <laughs> Boitumelo Jackals. Jason Orapeling Januari. Nkolisi Michael Kangue.
Ucha King and Lenyedi. Sichaba Justice Litabe. Sherin Nadia Esmeralda McLean. Madala Rotondwa Iton. Genevieve Ntsepeng Makoko. Ole Boging Godfrey Stephen Marwane. Nomasontu Thelma Maseku. Kelly Bochile Matule. Edwin Paseka Mere Kopane. Sipiwe Marsha Mfusi. Palesa Charity Mokwane. Komotsu William Modi Rakhale. Matapelu Wini Charity Mokorosi. Mulaleki Loratu, Virginia. Renailwe Catherine Moraki. Nomvume Daphne Moreeng. Halaletsu Prudentia Moriotenye. Israel Gaulonog Role Pule Mosakha. Pule Moses Motebe. Prudence Boitumelo Mpalele. Kewen Jacobus Francois Nodier. Yonginkosi James Ndika. Mamoteki Elizabeth Nkoboti. Nkebesua Eugenia Nkozu. Salilu Edward Nsundeni. Ulisani Paswana. Msimasi Kumbelu.
Melvin Demba Reins. Mercedes Morongwa Selebojo. Nobulelu Umieja Seleke. Nolia Serima. De Bojo Sicili. Ompolokile Mabatu Taje. Jemima Tahane. Trevor Henry Thijs. Piaketswe Yunus Timothy. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Providence Cholofelo July received the Award of Excellence for Research in the Postgraduate Diploma in Public Management. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Beulah Melissa Krier van Rooyen receives an award for the best overall performing student in the Postgraduate Diploma in Public Management. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied the requirements for the Postgraduate Diploma in Entrepreneurship. Johanna Cornelia Ferris. Katlehu Caswell Loetu. Nangamsu Mangu. Tlalefu Mokopudi. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Tatu Ngaba receives an award for the best overall performing student in the postgraduate diploma in entrepreneurship. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the candidates whose names were not read but appear in the program receive their degrees in absentia. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, the School of Natural and Applied Sciences uh, during this uh, graduation ceremony. Um, we've got a total of uh, 120 graduates that are, that are distributed as follows. The Diploma in ICT Applications Development has got 39 graduates. Uh, the Advanced Diploma in ICT has got 12. Bachelor of Science, 36. Bachelor of Science in Data Science, 12. 
And then uh, the five honors programs have got a total of uh, 21 graduates. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Diploma in Information and Communication Technology in Applications Development. Laika Anthony. <laughs> Seden Keegan Canel. Tepang Cho. Osborne Litakana Dihashu. Tekiso Kenneth Kwate. Edith Liseho Chalele. Riali Buha, Advocate Itumeleng. Amuhelang Koki. Kevakazi Madiba. Tatisi Ernestina Manase Wupilo Lydia Martin Mweketi Mashiko Michaela Metis, Kidia Mugeti Hilda Meko, Ria Mugeti Kutuano Mirae. Lutando Mleche, pass with distinction. Lisedi Mwichwaneti. Kutwano Mugele. Karabo Ivodia Mukwena. Witoko Murveng. Witumelo Ignatius Moyo. Bravlin Victoria Tido Moyo. <laughs> Tovani Truman Chapeka. <laughs> Shaida Tamina Rashid. Uratile Seviting <laughs> Nompumelelo Non Tlasha Siko
Awakwe Sitole. Derek Junaid Snyders. Livandri Libago Titus. Advice Kabelo Sharising. Sheldon Eugene Tenner. Cheslin Kinu Van Veik. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that uh, Chinemeremen Miriam Anozi receives an award for best performing student in the diploma in ICT in recognition of her achievement. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the advanced diploma in information and communication technology in applications development. Kalalitsang Chompo Mawote. Supi Senra Maka. Kumuzo Vinolia Mukalakadi. Unkarabetse Mulefi. Lisho Honolo Mupai. Naledi Mutate Kiniso Nchingila Ashwell Rudwan Sars. Unolo Jade Seve. Mr. Chancellor. I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Science. Mazi Badli. Chancha Alfred Jaja. Panelo Zakaria. Kanyisa Huita. Kiuchepa, Kiuchepa, Jonathan. Kazim Lakana. Kakisho Innocent Huele. Uwami Mashaba. <laughs> 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 
nozibusiso nonhlahla mbatha Daniel Spiek Paseka Brian Lichuti Lisedi Nsele Charles Liam Kruger Untati Les Yudiheng Dimpo Daphne Mawe Tabang Edward Ntalong Umuto Jeanette Lidwawa Mameche Sense Pelenomi Precious Takadu Kia Mugete Magnodia Mogi Litavo Mushwezi Naledi Lina Sivonisho Donovan Austin Fesaki Kositile Shadrach Muawi Lorato Preya Sayakai Unalina Ratulo Jody Lee Scott Tebo Michael Feldman Rantie Kane Solomon Mosiane Ndipiwe Bradley Mone Dingile Kahiso David Smiles Ronel Leoni Jongers Kaone John Mukwarkeiti Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that David Riaz receives an award for best performing student in the BSc in Biological Sciences in recognition of his achievement. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Science in Data Science. Kwanele Fadane. Takuzwa Steven Machida. Malvin Rotondwa Heavy Maposa.
Ellen Sipesije Masiko. Faith Liwone Muchabi. Takunda Nyenya. Cecil Ronaldo Donovan Plakis. Anna Sibulai. Christian Standa. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Leander Gary receives an award for best performing student in the BSc in Data Science in recognition for this recognition. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Science Honors in Biological Sciences. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Sindiswa Pamela Skosana receives an award for Best Performing Student in the BSc Honors in Biological Sciences and Geology. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Science Honors in Computer Science. Siabonga Mamapule, pass with distinction. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Melvin Kesten receives an award for best performing student in the BSc Honors in Computer Science. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Science Honors in Data Science. Becky Danisa. Raberani Libunyu. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Stephanie Baum receives an award for best performing student in the BSc Honors in Data Science. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Science Honors in Mathematical Sciences. Innocentia Rechidisitwe Muhalutaati. Emilia Tembile Kamis. Patience Mukosi <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, 
I have the pleasure of informing you that Jaden Peterson receives an award for best performing student in the BSc Honours in Mathematical Sciences. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Science Honors in Physical Science. Betuel Sipena Karavo Langa. Marvelous Oakina. Alfred Daniel Reed. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the candidates whose names were not read but appear in the program receives their degrees in absentia. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Mr. Chancellor, uh, please provide me the opportunity to first of all congratulate all of the graduandi sitting here. Special word of congratulations to students in humanities that will be getting higher certificates and degrees. And then also a special congratulations to uh, students that will be getting the honors degrees and a very, spurt of, uh, very special word of congratulations to the first ever master student at Salt Lake University. Uh, thank you. In the School of Humanities we will be awarding 161 higher certificates and degrees including um, honours uh, graduations in six different disciplines and then as I mentioned the the master's qualifications. Uh, Mr. Chancellor I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the uh, requirements for the highest certificate in court interpreting. Liu Mei Elzan Bartman Uh, Ms. Bartman has also passed the qualification with distinction. <laughs> Lebuhang Kakutsi. Tsepiso <laughs> Theodore Klip. Rishon Rudin Manuel. <laughs> Abram Sibusisu Makachwa. <laughs> Nolutandu Matlonolo Mkwanazi. Nitemba Adelaide Mnisi. Thank you. Kanya Taule. Mr. Chancellor, uh, I have the pleasure to inform you 
that Tsepiso Tlomalang received an award for the best performing student and the highest certificate in court interpreting in recognition of his achievements and he has also passed the qualification with distinction. Vuyu Tombela. Nkilileta Ntongwane. Luciso Mabandla. Cesamile Chabalala. Relopehile Vincent Tequiso. Pumza Nongejane. Namatsehang Frumensha Motlomi. The Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the highest certificate in heritage studies. Ntebohang Ba Keleng. Akona Brown. Tabile Precious Butelezi. Kaliboha Sophie Dudwilling. Solo Felang Irland. Kotlolo Elias Kontoye. <laughs> Mapule Fredelin Lempe. <laughs> Ntabeleng Mamohwe. Na Lady Bontling at Moshe Matthews. <laughs> Paul Donald Mohomotse and passed with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Larato Mohodi. Tuto Mamokone uh, Motlabane passed with distinction. Sinensha Nwamtangela Ngobeni. Alicia Santina Michaela Peterson passed with distinction. Your name, Candace Farland. Lisejo Rejoice Zondani.
Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelors of Arts. Barbara Babalelo Bocello. Chantanese Shanae Bootes. Beauty Chaka. Sheldon Wilbert Kluter. Annalyn Viola Kutsia. Caitlin Tamia Cole. Popolang Audrey Dikelele. Babalelo Lazarus Ukhainatebe. Ramona Sherilyn Hendricks. Tepanang Tlatswayo. Mr. Chancellor, I have the uh, pleasure of informing you that Jacquet Werner Horn receives an award for the best performing student in the Bachelor's of Art degrees in recognition for his achievements. Ratlang Yantlo. Lebohang Dr. Yakals. Homachetse Genevieve Kotla Homang. Reatibele Fredia Claudia Kulule. Felicity Nokosi Kumalo. Karabo Princess Kitty. Kelebohile Kubese. Valencia Meres Kurasi. Masejo Patricia Kubu. Poitsepo Veronica Lacey. Orateng Lobakeng. Kaylin Jade Low. Olebocheng Elizabeth Madumo. Kalele Tsang Kolebochile Bronwyn Mahare. Lesejo Michelle Maisela.
Nicole Stephanie Martinez. Tepiso Marumu. Wandisile Carol Matabula. Jessica Rafilwe Matloko. Bongeka Nyandu. Oratile Chantel Mokoro. Lezi Chohanozo Moleele. Happiness Mutau. Maleratu Matsepo Motloung. Mpo Lopez Mposi. Poipelo Morgan Motone. Nosipo Nakutemba Nkonyeni. Sisimo Hang Nkosi Babrie Ntende Ereme Kweni Os Zenobia Nakalo Saba Saba. Tepiso Tiny Sale. Ya Betwe Setelo. Etafazzo Molten Samolapo. Tabano Seaco. Terelen Josephine Tepotlane. Ukamoso setlo setlo leong, sorry, setlo setlo leing. My apologies. Lauren Nolin Snyder. Nicole Lonig Snyder. Gladness Tsehohazo Tabe. Tami Tebeka. Kutlano Tong. Amelia Brittany van Royen.
von Diswa Vena. Winslow Randolph Ralph Fusahi. Which one? Three times. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Arts Honors in Languages Afrikaans. Bridget Bernice Brandt. Donza Lee Nicole Kathleen Gathrie. Kyle, uh, call Ivan Julius passed the degree with distinction. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of informing you that Francisca Shanae Julius passes the degree with Afrikaans honors in distinction, but also receives an award for the best performing student in the honors programs in recognition of her activities and achievements in humanities. <laughs> Shannon Danell van Kradenburg. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelors of Art Honors in Languages English. Junie Ann Elizabeth George. Lerdi Rosina Maseka. Rafilwe Precious Di Clolelo. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Social Sciences Honors Anthropology. Ashley van der Merwe. Sebenzilo Masifako Punguayo. Tabita Nkriki. Tenashe Musunda. Kehomeditswe in Essentia Maruping and passed the degree with distinction. Yeah. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelors of um, Social Science Honors History. Tirumilani Padayachi Samuel. Mr. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Bachelor of Social Science Honors Sociology. Nande Onesimo Boise. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
Shane, Michiel, hey Simon. Dimpo Victoria Cook. Uiswa Mpata. Tiboniso Colin Gumetze. Otalang Edwin Loche. Namtla Yonela Dingendlela. Brendan Catlejo Thomas. Mr. Chancellor, I have the distinct honor to present the following candidates who have complied with the requirements for the Masters of Arts, Sociology. <laughs> These candidates are also the first Masters degree graduates of Salt Lake University. Talita Kahisho Morowane. Vungala Molautsi. Mr. Chancellor, I did not have the opportunity because of the noise to read uh, the, the, the theses of the successful candidates, so I do it as an afterthought. Thank you for, for the noise that you've made for our master's student. Uh, Talita Kahiso Morowane successfully completed the following dissertation, working agency in the gig economy, the case of food delivery gig workers in Rustenburg, South Africa. And, and Vugala Mulahutsi um, successfully completed the following dissertation, Youth Utilization of Sexual and Productive Health Services in Rural South Africa, uh, Knowledge Perceptions and Experiences in Mutale Limpopo. Mr. Chancellor, the candidates whose names were not read but appear in the program receive their degrees in absentia. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to invite the president of the convocation, Mr. Tabu Moshe, to welcome all of you who just graduated and were certificated and the diplomats into the convocation. Mr. Moshe, please. Uh, I did not see the time. I don't know if it's morning or afternoon. But anyway, good day. And before I start with my little speech, I would like to look around and look at um, the former president, Solomon Musiani, and also recognize Amokhelang Koki for simple reasons that um, I'm proud because they come from my township, Amprestat. It's a, 
Pamprista is a dusty place. It's, it's, it's a hopeless place with hopeful youth. That is why I'm saying congratulations to Pamprista. Uh, to the Chancellor, to the Vice Chancellor, to the Chairperson of Council, to our keynote speaker, Professor Bauer, to our Dean of Students, to the SMT, academics, the SRC, and the convocation, graduates, parents, and all those that I could not mention. Allow me to say greetings to you all. By name, they call me Tabo Moshe. I'm the old machine of SPU. I'm the clarifier of all contradictions. And I am the original child of this institution. When I look at you, the class of 2022, I see a light of hope for our dark society. I see an inspiration that has always been lacking in our hopeless future. Your parents must brag about you wherever they go. Because some of our students did not make it to the end because they did not meet the requirements. Some were almost there, but death unfortunately did not allow them to walk up on the stage. ICT class of 2014, may your soul continue to rest in peace. Tato Mere, a.k.a. Stola, class of 2016, B.A.T., may your soul continue to rest in peace. And others who I've never met nor had a pleasure to engage with in social spaces. I apologize deeply if I cut into the healing wounds. But credit must be given where it's due, because today is a happy day for everyone who is here. Everyone has gathered here to witness the victory that you've been seeking for three, four, five, or maybe more years. But thank you for not giving up. You are now part of the alumni family. And officially, I would like to welcome you. Welcome to the alumni family. <laughs> One day, you'll be like me. You'll be sitting next to the big shots. But your journey should not end here. Go out there and impart this knowledge that you got through sweat and tears. The endless nights, anxiety and depression, longest night of bioplast and caffeine, the panic of exam time, all those has ended. But please keep on studying because you are no longer the oxala your type. You are that type of perhaps and otherwise. Lastly, before I close, I would like to tell you that Einstein was not lying when he said, if I can see further than others, it simply means I was standing on the shoulders of a giant. Last but not least, through you, Registrar, I would like to say congratulations to the class of 2022. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you to our president of the convocation, Mr. Moshi. I'm going to ask uh, the assembly to please rise as we sing the national anthem and to remain standing until the chancellor has dissolved uh, the assembly. The academic procession will leave first, uh, followed by the graduates, and then the guest and others will follow thereafter. So please, if we can stand and get ready to sing the national anthem. Thank you.
Thank you. I am supposed just to close this congregation, but may I say something? <laughs> please. A chancellor is not supposed to speak, but may I speak, please? You are the future of our country. You know that I sit in the highest court in the land. We are the last stop. And we are concerned. But our concerns for the future are addressed by you, beautiful people. Congratulations. Well done. You listened to a beautiful speech today by a wonderful academic, Professor Ahmed Bawa. Go out and make a change in the world. And thank you, mamas, papas, gogos, grandpas, grandmas. Thank you. Yali boha. Nkoska kulu. And lest I be slaughtered when I get back there, thank you too to the lecturers and the professors and, and the SMT. Thank you. By virtue of the powers conferred upon me, I now dissolve this congregation of the Soul Plaiki University. <laughs>